So, has anyone actually ever figured out Colonel Sanders' secret recipe blend of 11 herbs and spices? Dozens upon dozens of individuals claim to have solved the world-renowned mystery, but which of them, if any, should we believe? Should we believe the Colonel's own nephew, who used to mix the spices himself when he was a child? The scientist, who chemically analyzed KFC's ingredients in a laboratory? Or should we believe KFC, the multinational corporation that has nothing to gain and everything to lose by the recipe because coming public knowledge. Who claims to this very day, quote, no one's ever been right? Well, never fear, theorists, because today's food theory will answer it all. We're putting the most legitimate contenders to the test, as well as our own. Spoiler alert, I think we've got it. Welcome to Food Theory, where today we're doing something very scary, actually cooking. Cooking food, oh my gosh. And not just cooking any food, we are cooking perhaps one of the best kept secret foods in all of history, Colonel Sanders secret recipe. Yes. What do you think the secret is, Matthew? I think the secret, the secret is love. Oh man, and I here I was thinking it was just like little clippings of his beard that had fallen into the chicken batter. So I think everyone can agree that KFC's 11 infamous herbs and spices are one of the most renowned secret recipes in food history. And we've found a lot of different recipes that say that they've cracked the code. And today we're gonna put them to the test. Yeah, so we have five different dupe recipes that we're going to be trying today. Um, some of them are crowdsourced, some of them come from food scientists, and some of them even come from Colonel Sanders himself, Ooh. question mark. Let's get going. Yeah, there's a lot to cover today and a lot of chicken that needs to be fried. So let's stop throwing our bowls around and start cooking. As we throw our bowls in the ring, it's important to keep in mind that recreating KFC's original recipe is a bit like hitting a moving target. People have been trying to get the recipe right since before I was born. And during that time, the taste of KFC's chicken has changed to a certain degree. The secret 11 herbs and spices almost certainly haven't, but we know for a fact that KFC has tweaked other aspects of the recipe and preparation process, like adopting new frying oils that contain fewer trans fats. Even the late Colonel Sanders believed his recipe was altered to a noticeable degree during his own lifetime. Shortly after selling Kentucky Fried Chicken in 1964, he began voicing displeasure about perceived recipe changes being made under KFC's new ownership. As a result, some of the recipe contenders we're looking at today seek to recreate the Colonel's true original recipe before KFC corporate took over. Other recipe contenders seek to recreate the taste of KFC's original recipe the way we've come to know and love it in more recent decades. In recent years, years, KFC has adopted soybean oil as its frying oil of choice in many locations, especially here in the U.S. Since we'll be comparing our recipe contenders against contemporary KFC chicken fried in soybean oil, we're gonna fry all of our contender recipes in soybean oil too. Last thing I'll mention, it's well known that KFC fries their chicken in pressure fryers, which not only fry the chicken faster, but also give KFC's fried chicken its distinct extra crispy texture. Sadly, I didn't have one of those in the kitchen, so today's contender recipes are gonna have to settle for the deep fryer. Steph and I promised to judge them not on texture, but taste and taste alone. And also, to be fair, our chicken totally turned out crispier. Just saying. Now, without further ado, let's put our first contender to the test. This recipe was developed by author and TV host Todd Wilbur. So Todd Wilbur, for those who don't know, is actually famous for recreating famous recipes. He's done the Big Mac, he's done Wendy's Chili, he's done a whole bunch of secret famous recipes that you shouldn't technically be able to make at home, including the KFC original recipe. Do you really need someone to recreate the Big Mac? The commercials tell you what's in it. To all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, and a sesame seed bun. Well, there's to the all special beef patties, sauce. special sauce. Special sauce, what's that? Isn't it just Thousand Island dressing? I don't, sh what? He's also done Mrs. Fields cookies. Anyway, I thought that was interesting. That does sound delicious. I know. I love this man, why, can we hire him? <laughs> I feel like this is a person who should be on this channel. He's already a best-selling author who's been on like every major talk show. He doesn't need us. But has he been on YouTube before? We can poorly animate a stick figure of him for years. That does sound like a high value proposition. We should call him. We should. 
Call us up, Todd Wilbur. Well, let's see how his recipe works out first and then decide. All right, yeah. Okay. Good, good point. Now, the reason we're starting with this recipe is because Todd Wilbur, on top of being a guy who's talented enough to have made a career out of hacking recipes, really seems to have done the legwork to get the recipe right. In 2011, Wilbur's TV show, Top Secret Recipes, visited KFC's pressure fryer supplier, and Wilbur spoke with a friend and business associate who knew the colonel personally. Telecherry. What's a telecherry? T-L-E-C-H-E-R-I. Tell a cherry pepper. It gives it the aftertaste. This, of course, was on top of Wilbur's own research and trial and error efforts. But perhaps the most useful thing of all is the fact that Wilbur's findings were adapted into a full-blown step-by-step recipe. The same cannot be said for certain other contender recipes in today's episode. Seriously, some of them are basically a list of ingredients without quantities or anything. Fun fact, this ingredient is completely verboten in our household. Stephanie had a traumatic experience as a kid with black pepper. Completely banned. So this is actually the first black pepper that I've had in over a decade <laughs> because I've been married to Stephanie. It's true. Pretty much. Not even on salad or pasta. Nothing. Not nope. even in soup. We just don't use black pepper here. Nothing. Sir, say when. Remember, sir, you can say when. When the brining, dredging, breading, and frying were finally complete, it was time to put Todd Wilbur's recipe head-to-head -head against KFC's original. Should we do KFC first? I, it's delicious. Very good. Mm -hmm. I definitely get some of the pepperiness. I definitely get some sort of aromatic something in there, but I don't really know what it is. And salt. It's funny. For 11 herbs and spices in there, not getting a lot. I'm mostly just tasting pepper, to be honest. Yeah, I'm getting pepper. Yeah. I get the pepper on the back end. Mm -hmm. But All I'm right. not getting a big spice mix. Interesting. Let's All right. taste Todd. Todd. Shall we? Here we go. All right, here we go, Todd. This is the man who literally wrote the book on secret recipes. We're counting on you. Oh, we made great fried chicken. Wow. Mm. Wow. So yeah, first impression. Our fried chicken is great. Good job, it's Steph. So good. It's so it's good. It's so good. I'm so happy this right now. This is great. I'm wow. Glad. The flavor is the thing that matters. I actually am not getting as much pepper in this one as I did from KFC. I like it a bit better, to be honest, but I, I think that KFC has a different flavor than this. Yes. I'm not getting any of that like black pepperiness that I'm mm -hmm. feeling on the back end of the KFC. In a scale of one to 10 matching KFC, what would you rate Todd Wilbur's? I would actually only rate this about a six. Sorry, Todd. Real six? That's pretty high. I would rate it at probably about a four. Wow, okay, you're really dipping in there. I, I, I gotta have somewhere to go. Mm -hmm. This is my first one. Maybe I'm artificially rating it too low. <laughs> I tried to aim for the middle, so yeah. I had room on either side. Now on to recipe contender number two, which isn't exactly a recipe per se. It's actually a lab result published by author William Poundstone in his 1983 book, Big Secrets. That's right, this guy had a laboratory conduct a qualitative analysis on a sample of KFC coating mix in order to identify every ingredient that's present. What's noteworthy about Poundstone's findings was that the lab didn't find 11 herbs and spices. Not even close. In fact, the lab results identified just four ingredients total. Flour, salt, black pepper, and MSG. Yeah, Poundstone verified that the seasoning mixture he tested was the only seasoning involved in the preparation process. No, there was no additional substance found in the entire sample. Not a single grain. And yes, the lab was able to identify every single ingredient present in the sample. So according to Big Secrets, there are just three seasoning ingredients mixed into KFC's breading flour. That is a far cry from from the 11 herbs and spices, especially considering that salt and MSG aren't technically herbs or spices at all. Steph, I know that one of the things that you and I have always talked about with food theory is that we've wanted the ability to analyze recipes in a lab setting. Oh my gosh, I wanna send everything through a mass spectrometer. Yeah, if any of you have access to a mass spectrometer, hit us up. We wanna actually tap into the secret recipe of Diet Coke and other things. Yes. We promise we'll give your institution a shout out. So if there are any universities out there that need some shameless self-promotion, we are here to be shameless for you. 
She knows how to use a mass spectrometer. Uh, I can use it safely, I promise. Now, preparing fried chicken a la Poundstone was way more challenging than preparing Todd Wilbur's recipe. What the laboratory's qualitative analysis and big secrets didn't supply were proportions. The lab was asked to identify all ingredients present in the sample, but they were not asked to determine the quantities of those ingredients. So, Steph and I were kind of on our own to determine the correct amounts of each seasoning ingredient. We made an educated guess by borrowing ideas from similar recipes, but still, Poundstone really left us hanging here. This is how much I love Stephanie. I'm not making her touch the black pepper at all. That is nice. This is this is my gift to you, Stephanie. I appreciate you. Today is the day Food Theory graduates into becoming a chef. Oh, Food Theory, you're growing up into a legitimate uh, recipe channel. Andrew from Binging with Babish, we're, we're coming, coming for, for you. you. Binging with Babish. Not at all. Watch out, here comes Food Theory. <laughs> He's not afraid. No, not even, not even. I'm oh. afraid just thinking of him. I know. Eventually, I got over my fear and got back to work. After re-familiarizing ourselves with KFC's original recipe, Steph and I bit into our William Poundstone-inspired fried chicken, and you see the rest. From an accuracy standpoint? Yeah, from an accuracy standpoint, a one to ten. Accuracy rating, mine is a four or five on this one. Wow, less? Yeah, I think it's less. I was gonna say mine is still a four. It is about the same level of accurate. You got that saltiness in there, but and congratulations, you got flour, which is how you make fried chicken. Yeah. But, yeah. All right. All right. Next. Now, to be fair, Poundstone's laboratory test was performed nearly 40 years ago, and KFC's original recipe may have changed slightly since then. Also, Steph and I probably guessed a bit wrong on the ingredient proportions, but hey, that's kind of on old Poundstone. Next up, the fried chicken seasoning that sounds like it was someone's handle in a game of laser tag, 99X. This one's actually really fascinating. So, Colonel Sanders apparently was so disappointed with the KFC Corporation watering down his recipe or the instructions that they were giving out to franchisees of the name that he went to an external company, Marion K Spices, and said, hey, make me this spice recipe. And then he encouraged all the people who were doing KFC restaurants to go with this spice recipe. Yeah, it's actually here, it's bottled. You can buy it to this day. Yeah, you can buy it, but it has to go by the name 99X because the KFC Corporation got into a lawsuit with these guys to basically be like, hey, stop it. No, get out of here. Which this maybe like recipe. meant that they were on the right track. No, I, I I feel like this is has promise. Personally, I think that this is the one that is going to knock it out of the ballpark. It also just solidifies Harlan's reputation as like difficult guy to work with. Here, I'm gonna sell my company to this larger company but I'm gonna try to undermine them because I'm not happy with the work they're doing. Fascinating. So the story behind 99X seems really promising, but it comes with a catch. We don't know the recipe of 99X. All we know are the ingredients that they've listed on the packaging as required by the FDA. So we know that this spice blend contains, quote, monosodium glutamate, white and black pepper, fine flake salt, sage, coriander, and other natural spices. But that's it. It means if 99X winds up being the perfect taste match, the kernels secret is still pretty safe. Mary and Kay includes a brief borderline cryptic recipe on their site, and that is what we're going to be testing today. I gotta say, I just love the fact that one of the spices we're using today is called 99X. It's like the hardest core kitchen spice ever. Right? So clearly you can see a lot of black pepper in there. It smells really good. It's actually super fragrant. I'm shocked at how little spice that you actually need in fried chicken to make it taste good. That's probably been the biggest shock to me as we've been working on this so far. It's... Look at it, there's like nothing in here. Nothing. It's all just much flour. Mary and Kay's recipe was a cinch to make, and we were ready to put 99X to the test in no time. As always, we tasted KFC's original recipe chicken first, then the contender. Ready? This one is actually much closer. Mm -hmm. And there, it's not like too anything. It's not too salty. Mm -mm. It's not too peppery. This one is really close, actually. Yeah, it's really, really close. So on the accuracy scale of one to 10, I would give this one like an eight. Like yeah. maybe I can taste a difference, but I'm not entirely sure all the time, which says to me that it's like up there. It's like an eight. Yeah, I think if you gave me this in a blind taste test, I would have a really hard time knowing it was different from KFC's. Yeah. I think the 99X without question is the closest that we've done so far. Yep. It also might be my favorite so far. It is my favorite so far. Yeah, I really like yeah. this one. I would recommend that recipe above the other two, partially because it's so much easier. There's just, you buy one ingredient and you're kind of done. Yeah. And then it came out great. This one is also super crispy, yeah. just throwing it out there. So the one thing that I would love to have seen with this actually is 
this mixture, but with the 99X cranked up a little bit, with the ratio a little bit higher in the spice category. With just a little bit more, I feel like it would be like a 10. Yeah, I feel like you could get it right there because right now it's just a little bit more subtle than what I'm getting out of the KFC. You know what though? I'm not sure I would like it better if you did. Mm, I like this one a lot. It's really good. Like better than the KFC. Like Ooh, the, really? The, I like the first one better than the KFC too. I just, I really like fried chicken, Steph, I guess. Steph is throwing KFC under the bus. I know, sorry. Man. Man. Now, the story behind our next recipe contender also seems really promising. In 2016, the food world got rocked by an article in the Chicago Tribune. Joe Lettington, the nephew of Colonel Sanders himself, came forward with this handwritten recipe found in an old scrapbook passed down to him from his aunt Claudia Price, who was Harlan Sanders' second wife. While the note is not written in the Colonel's handwriting, Joe claims it contains the correct ingredients and proportions for the Colonel's secret blend. And Joe should know, he actually worked at Harlan's Diner when he was a kid, and claims to have even mixed the blend of herbs and spices himself. Now, the Chicago Tribune tested this recipe themselves, and determined that the capital T's on the recipe refer to tablespoons, not teaspoons. They claimed the recipe tasted quite similar to KFC's original recipe as written, but when they took the liberty of adding MSG, the recipe became, quote, virtually indistinguishable. So we took their word for it on both fronts. We went with tablespoons and we added MSG. The Chicago Tribune also prepared their chicken with a buttermilk egg bath instead of the skim milk egg bath that we've been using thus far. Since their results wound up being virtually indistinguishable, we followed their steps to the letter. This is a lot of seasoning relative to all the other recipes that yeah. we've done. This is a lot. The ratio of flour to seasoning is much different. Four, wow, four tablespoons of paprika. This is gonna be a really spicy chicken. Right? Wow. It's gonna be a really intense recipe. This is so vastly different from all the other recipes we've done so far. It's literally a completely different color it's, than all of the other chicken it's recipes. It's wild. It's red, it's yellow, it's brown. You can actually see the seasoning in there. I'm most excited about this one. Me too. This one's gonna be good, I think. The recipe calls for four tablespoons of paprika, which makes for a much darker breading than we found in the previous recipes. I promise that color's not from staying in the fryer too long. It stayed in the fryer the exact same length as every other one of these tested. And also, the breading had a really nice consistency when it hit our mouths. Okay, so Matthew, here's what I'm gonna say about this. Yeah. Which you will probably not find relatable. Okay. But growing up here in North Carolina, yeah. I used to occasionally go to like mom and pop places where they would serve like mom and pop fried chicken. Sure. It looked darker. Sure. It tasted spicier. Mm -hmm. And it was more similar to this than any of the other ones we've tried. Interesting. So this feels to me like a Southern style mom and pop recipe. The weird thing about this one is, and, and the thing that I don't quite understand, I feel like it should have more flavor than it does. It looks like it's saturated with spice and flavor. And you saw the amount of spice and flavor that went into that mix. Mm -hmm. And I bite it. And there's not a whole lot of flavor there. The buttermilk has made it super juicy. I will say yeah, that. Yeah, it's super juicy. The, the, the meat is actually delicious, but definitely not KFC. On a scale of one to 10, does it match KFC? It's like... It was like a three. Like two. Yeah. Because I was rating it at four before. The yeah. other ones do a much, much better job. I can't believe it. these results, actually. I'm, like, I'm shocked. Now, it's important to keep in mind that if this recipe is indeed authentic, it could very well date back to the 1950s or even 40s when the Colonel was still developing the recipe. It could be an example of the Colonel's true OG recipe the way he intended it before KFC corporate got their finger licking fingers in the mix. So the fact that it doesn't match the look or taste of contemporary KFC chicken should be taken with a grain of MSG. Something similar could also be said for our next recipe known as tc 34 D. It also seeks to recreate the Colonel's OG recipe, as opposed to the fried chicken sold by KFC Corporate today. But what you need to understand about TC34D is that it's a recipe meticulously, and I do mean meticulously, crafted by the internet hive mind. If there is a secret, the internet will find it and tear it apart and solve it. And so you had a group of devoted KFC fans 
trying to actually solve the Colonel's secret recipe. And these guys weren't just content in solving it, they were getting down to the level of finding where in the world geographically these ingredients were coming from. I mean, just take a look at this recipe. It's not enough to add 5 16 teaspoons of ginger. They're asking you to find ginger specifically from Jamaica because the flavor profile is ever so slightly more accurate. Ready to add 0 0.020 grams of cardamom? Better make sure it's Guatemalan first. Definitely wasn't easy to find all these ingredients, even with Google's help. Couldn't help but wonder if Colonel Sanders really gave a hoot whether or not his white pepper was from Malaysia back when he was crafting his recipe out of a gas station. But hey, I'm not gonna knock it until I've tried this amazingly detailed recipe for myself. TC34D is believed to be a product of a now defunct internet forum, kfc.forumup.co.uk, which is inactive today because members believe that they'd cracked the recipe a while ago. For years, this dedicated group of internet sleuths used any and all information available to them to crack the Colonel's recipe. That meant adjusting the recipes through trial and error in their home kitchens and soaking up every scrap of information available to them. For instance, this photo, released by KFC, shows the 11 herbs and spices kept in the vault at KFC's headquarters in Louisville, Kentucky. The forum members absolutely picked this photo apart and made sure that their 11 herbs and spices match the coloring of the vials in the picture. Notice those letters next to each ingredient in the TC34D recipe? Those refer to the corresponding lettered vials. Finally, as you might deduce from the titling method used for these recipes, TC34D is hardly the only one that these forum members came up with. It just happens to be the one that's the most famous, but there's certainly not unanimous consent that it's the most accurate. There are dozens of other recipes worthy of consideration, developed in these forums and otherwise that we simply don't have the time to test in today's episode. Now then, how excited are we to try the crowdsourced recipe that harnesses the power of the entire internet? Approximately this excited. <laughs> Terrible. I'm so sorry. Plop. Folks, this recipe calls for Tahitian vanilla bean. How could you not be excited about this? So after tasting KFC's original recipe, we took a bite out of TC34D. Nope. No. No, it definitely. It does not taste the same at all. Not even close. There's like more ginger. Not even close. There's more internet. paprika which I can taste those things, first of all, mm -hmm. which means they're not accurate, but... No, right? All right. I, I feel mean, like... It, it's tasty, actually, but it's a very different fried chicken. Oh, yeah. Team Internet. Super wacky. What you doing? You guys, you are so... They're like, it's gotta be Jamaican white pepper. Maybe you should have just focused on getting the 12 verbs and spice, 11 it's herbs It's almost and like there. people who do analysis on the internet overcomplicate things. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. So Stephanie, when it comes to crowdsource on a scale of 1 to 10, what's the matching for KFC? It's like 1. <laughs> Sorry guys. Right, like it, it wasn't Sorry, it wasn't I close swear, at all. we followed your recipe, we wanted it to, like, we are on Team Internet. We we root for Team Internet. Yeah. This was just not, this was just not our day. Yeah, the group think was not really working. I would say, yeah, maybe it's a, maybe it's a two, maybe it's a one. It's low. Right. The sweetness is the thing that. The is vanilla, what are you doing in there? The vanilla really threw it off. Now, it bears repeating that TC34D's aim was attempting to recreate the Colonel's personal, pre-corporate version of the secret recipe, so the goal of the recipe wasn't so much to match the taste of the contemporary KFC chicken, but I gotta say, the taste of TC34D was just so, so different. Not bad, it was really tasty, but to me it just didn't seem related to KFC's original recipe fried chicken in any discernible way. Tahitian vanilla is really sweet, and that sweetness really came through in the recipe, in a way that didn't really match my expectation of what southern fried chicken usually tastes like. So it leaves us with a very clear winner mm -hmm. in terms of the matching potential. The 99X very clearly took it by a wide margin. So does that actually solve the problem? Because the whole problem here, right, is that it is a secret recipe and we've solved that secret recipe using a secret spice. So, okay, it solves the, it doesn't solve it in actuality, but it does solve the problem, which is that you can't recreate KFC original recipe at your house. Actually, you can get very close where you take it, you run with it, and you can recreate KFC at home. However, there is one final ingredient that we have to test. Recently, KFC and all their marketing craziness decided, hey, 
why don't we release a telenovela style romance called A Recipe for Seduction starring Mario Lopez as Colonel Sanders. We actually cover this over on Film Theory today. So if you haven't seen that episode, check it out. There's an iCard. There's an iCard. There's, there's, there's an iCard in one of the corners. Somewhere. Probably this corner. Yeah, probably that one. Probably this corner. <laughs> and in A Recipe for Seduction, there was something that we thought might be a hidden code, alluding to a secret ingredient that none of these recipes cover. Every time that Colonel Sanders is cooking in the kitchen or whatever, he is associated with citrus. Some sort of magical bowl of citric fruit out there. It's very odd. Again, we go much deeper in depth in this on the film theory episode, but we wanted to test it out. We're like, is citrus the secret ingredient that KFC is trying to communicate to us via their telenovela made for TV special starring Mario Lopez. You never know, we just leave no stone unturned and wanted some more fried chicken. Okay, I know this sounds outrageous. Like, is Matt Pat honestly expecting you to believe that the Colonel Sanders put fruit in his recipe? No, but KFC Corporate did, long after they purchased the company from the Colonel. Remember how KFC started using soybean oil in order to cut down on the trans fat? Well, citric acid, the chemical that gives citrus fruits their distinct sour taste can be added to soybean oil to make it last longer. And that's exactly what KFC has started to do in recent years. They even say so on their website. Now, citric acid has a strong taste. Is it possible that it affects the flavor of contemporary KFC chicken, even though it's just an additive to the oil and not an explicit ingredient in the recipe? Was a recipe for seduction trying to tell us something by jamming over 70 fruit cameos into a 16-minute mini-movie? There's only one way to find out, friends. So here we go, friends. This is our final batch of fried chicken. This is the 99X recipe plus the secret ingredient of citric acid from the telenovela, A Recipe for Seduction. First, we tasted KFC's original recipe one final time before moving on to the grand finale. This is it, with citric acid. Wow. Hmm. Is that the secret ingredient? Am I imagining that it tastes a little bit closer? It does taste a little bit closer. It tastes a is little it a bit nine closer. now? I think I, I think this bumps it up to a nine. I think this is it. That can't be. Really? Mario Lopez wouldn't lie. Because it does taste just a little bit closer. It does. It does. It is slightly closer. Are we making it up? No, I don't think we are. No, it's got. I don't know. What? <laughs> it's weird. It is very strange, but. I thought this was gonna be such an anticlimactic episode and we were gonna get there and be like, nope, no difference. Mm -hmm. But I swear it's a little closer. It is. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> wow. No way. There it is. Huh. That's fascinating. I think that we've stumbled across it. I think if you take the 99X recipe, you crank it up just a little bit. Add a little bit more than, yeah. A little bit more than the ratios in the recipe that we got online, plus a little bit of citric acid from Recipe for Seduction in the oil. I think you got it. This is KFC. I think you have made KFC. It's real good, guys. It's great. I really recommend trying it at home. If you don't have a deep fryer, I think you could achieve very similar results with a pan fryer. Yeah, pan fry. I think that we have probably gotten as close as humanly possible to the KFC secret recipe without actually getting access to the KFC secret recipe. I'm I'm pretty convinced too. I think this is it, guys. What we a tested, successful uh, episode. This was great. <laughs> successful in many ways. So there you have it, friends. The KFC secret recipe, 99X plus a little bit of citric acid. Who knew? Who knew? We did. Yeah. Or at least. We just found out. That's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. <laughs> oh, oh God. God. That was oh, so gross. Deep. We didn't plan that. <laughs> we are the same person. <laughs> Thanks for watching, theorists. If you're hungry for more Kentucky Fried content, be sure to check out the other KFC themed episodes that we uploaded today at the same time as this episode. No, KFC didn't sponsor us, but if they wanted to, we'd totally be open for it. The film theory episode rips into that made for TV romance movie starring the Colonel himself and gives you more detail as to how we landed on citric acid as the secret ingredient. And the game theory episode looks at KFC's, uh, let's call it interesting, foray into gaming content. 
consoles. You're welcome, KFC. The least you could do is send us just a high-powered computer powered by chicken. That is no joke. That is what that thing is. And we're talking about it over on Game Theory. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go play some Ring Fit Adventure to try and burn off the bajillion fried chicken calories I just ingested.